Hi, welcome back to another Terranscapes mini product review. Mini. Today we're going to be taking a look at Woodland Scenics plaster mixing cups and their plaster painting brushes. And just before we jump into the review, I just want to say quickly that uh, Woodland Scenics has provided me with these products free of charge for the purposes of a review. And I have been incredibly, incredibly tardy on getting a video review of them up. I haven't been in a plaster working phase and uh, or even working on a project for a while there at a little gap and uh, it's just sort of languished until I could get some time to actually play with these products a little bit to give a better sense of how they uh, function and hold up. So apologies to Woodland Scenics. Sorry for the delay. Um, and this will be um, a split review and I will be doing the plaster that was sent as well as the uh, I got a, a mold and I'm looking over there oh and the shaper sheets so I'm going to talk a little bit more about that at the bench but those will be their own separate review um, that will come up hopefully in the not too distant future uh, certainly with a less lag between when these arrived and when I'm shooting this video so let's go over to the bench and I'll show you in more detail all right, so starting off on this review, I want to make it very clear. I am not reviewing the plaster itself, nor am I reviewing um, the shaper sheet itself. Uh, just as a quick explanation, shaper sheet is an aluminum foil, uh, like a heavy gauge aluminum foil with a uh, cotton fiber mesh overlay, and it's designed by Woodland Scenics to accept their plaster to create landforms. I need more time to play with both the plaster as well as the shaper sheet before I can give a real review on them. So don't ask me about that just yet. But the reason I did include the shaper sheet model here is I wanted to try applying some of the plaster with the brushes. Um, the brushes are silicone, uh, pla uh, silicone plaster. They are uh, silicone brushes, a um, little reminiscent of, the, of some basting brushes that I have seen. Uh, that just occurred to me right now, actually. Um, with the kit, you get um, two brushes, and I'm gonna pull this out here. Um, this is a three inch brush, and this is a one and a half inch brush. The uh, brushes are their own kit, and I'll give you pricing on that at the end. Um, and the mixing cups come together, two mixing cups, as well as a spatula. Now I left these all dirty and gummy so that I could show you cleaning them, which is uh, really one of their major selling points and is the main thing I wanted to test. So um, let's see if we can clean into this ball in some kind of reasonable sense. The spatula is also silicone. And to be fair, this is the worst case scenario. I mixed this up. I uh, applied it yesterday. I started shooting videos and I wasn't liking where it was going. I have to look at those files and see how those are coming out. Um, but uh, you, can't, you can't get a worse case scenario than leaving them sit overnight in the uh, cups. Now, I will say, I thought it came off just a hair easier yesterday. Um, I did do two, two runs. Look, it doesn't have to be spotless, but me, I like spotless. I want to see it back to new. Uh, but to be fair, uh, you would not be able to scrape it off even like this um, off of any other surface. So it is possible to get it clean, clean. And I'm not going to bore you with cleaning it more. <clears throat> but um, applying just a couple drops of water and rubbing it uh, with a towel, I um, was able to get it uh, pretty back to brand spanking new. The brushes are interesting. I was skeptical about how easy the plaster would come out of the bristles. And I realized that it's uh, plaster and not resin. And I've had some trouble with resin in bristles before. So but the thing about the plaster is it cracks and that gives it the ability to come off in, in chunks rather than trying to come out as a whole piece. Now, you don't want to just grab it and pull it. I mean, it's it's designed to release the plaster, but that doesn't mean it's designed to release it all as one piece. So I've been working it a little bit like this. Let's keep going here. This is a bad spot. Let's fracture that. And uh, as you start to get chunks broken off, uh, 
Okay. And uh, if I'm coming back on mic for this because I've sped it up, um, once you get it separated into chunks, it will just slide right off the bristles. Uh, once you get it down to a reasonable size piece, and uh, I'm going to see if I can pull that off without tearing a bristle out. I did. And uh, whoops, that's a great little piece. You see that little honeycomb kind of appearance? So it really releases quite well from the bristles. And as I work to get these last few bits out, oh, oh no, didn't tear it. I'm going to see if I can. I don't want to see if I can tear it, but I, I'm giving it really the you couldn't ask for a worse case scenario than what i'm doing here i don't think um one of the things that you should consider is that all you need to do really and make to make this process about a thousand times easier is to um, wipe your brush off and get most of the plaster off before you set it aside. You don't have to clean the brush right then, but just get the bulk of the plaster off of it, and then this process goes much, much smoother. But uh, hey, if you're like me, you get in a rush, all of a sudden your wife calls you and says, we got to go somewhere, and you forgot you were supposed to go somewhere, and you dash out of the house and you go, oh God, I'm just, I just left that brush and all that plaster. Well, fear not. With some work, you are able to restore it. stop there but you uh, get the idea um, that you can get this brush clean 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 and after really pulling on it um, I didn't actually uh, even pull out any of the bristles so that's pretty nice it's a very solid piece um, the handle is solid uh, feels you know durable and uh, it's um, all coated so it's all releasable as opposed to having a different material for the handle which will eventually get all gunked up by mm -hmm. the plaster now the cups are collapsible, come saw, and one of the things that I noticed, let's do that. I'm not going to clean clean it, but I just want to show you, let's wipe it out and get it mostly clean here. One of the uh, things I noticed is that when I was um, folding it up, it, see how it pops right there? If there's a little bit of wet plaster in there, uh, that wet plaster is heading towards you. So uh, take that in mind when you uh, when you deal with it. All right, we're gonna go speed this up. So let's see how clean I can get this. All right, I'm gonna call that clean for right now. Uh, personally, I would get a little wet paper towel and I would do a final wipe out just to uh, get all those last little bits. Uh, but uh, in the interest of keeping this review in some kind of reasonable amount of time, just for me, I'm gonna let it go there. Um, couple notes, the uh, cup is, um, the small cup is eight ounces or 240 milliliters and the large cup is, uh, I think it was 24, 20, 28 ounces and then it's also um, 900 milliliters um, the uh, test before I get to the shaper sheet just one quick thought on these the only concern I have well first of all I'm a little surprised that this ring isn't the same material as the handles for the brushes and spatula because the um, uh, you know because it's a little harder to clean plaster off of it though you know like i like i said i can get it off but that's kind of interesting because um, i like this material i like the feel in my hand and it is soft it's got maybe a stiffer core but it's it's pliable at the ends and uh it's just got a nice heft in the hand this feels like something you could work with for a long time at the uh, bench or at your project um so i don't know why they did that but maybe it's for rigidity purposes my only concern with the cups first of all it's nice to be able to clean it like that, really. Um, it's it's nice to just, the first time I did it too, I didn't have quite that much plaster and I just went pop and it all popped out pretty much and then I just ran my hand around it and I got it all clean. So 
I think they do the purpose that they set out to accomplish, especially um, when you fold it all up like this, and then you fold it all up like this, and then you can hang that on your shelf, and the profile on that is outstanding. Look at that. That takes no room, especially for a mixing cup that's a small pail. Um, so on to my one concern. If you watch as they uh, fold, right, the silicone is getting a little, it's a thinner area there. And when I've been working it, I can see the light through it. Uh, now, I don't know if that's going to show on camera. I'm going to try and take a look here and see if I can see. Well, we'll see. Oh, yeah, I think you can see it. So it's not a crack. Um, don't get me wrong. It's not a crack. It's a thinner area, and that's probably required for the accordion action. Um, my concern is whether that uh, bend will fatigue over time. Uh, and that may actually just be a product of age, like any rubber. Um, the rubbers, as they age, they get brittle. So I don't know what the ultimate lifespan of this is going to be, and that's going to be affected by how many times you're, you know, you're accordioning it up. So it's uh, one caveat that I can't actually give you more information on because I haven't had them that long, uh, even though this this review is late. It hasn't hasn't been that late for the life of, of a rubber like this. So those are the cups. And before we go, I do want to talk about brushing the plaster on, as that is a technique that I have never um, actually ever tried before. So what I did is I um, formed a very rough shape with the shaper sheet, and I uh, brushed the plaster on. I did two coats, um, one coat on this side, one coat on this side, and an overlapping coat. This mix that I did was the recommended mix on their new plaster. It's their, well, new, relatively new. Um, it's a uh, their extra hard plaster. Uh, I can't remember the name. Super Strength. And as I look over in the floor at it. And it mixes thick according to the directions. Because you're using a brush, um, it it's, it, I wouldn't say it's easy to work. And it's easier if you get right on it and you're working it before it starts to gel. Um, so I was able to uh, brush it on, uh, but it also, uh, wait, I'm not reviewing the shaper sheet. I was going to tell you something about the shaper sheet. It's not relevant. Um, the second time I mixed it just a hair thinner, just a hair. I didn't want to compromise its properties, especially because it's new to me. But when I did that, I was able to brush it much more uh, evenly. And you can see how I was able to uh, preserve some of this detail without it puddling, without it filling with plaster. I wanted to maintain a more uniform coverage. And once it was done, then I went over with the brush and um, after it started to set up just a little bit, and then I just sort of stippled it uh, just to see what happens. And it was a nice chance to see that it uh, can produce a little bit of texture. And that texture, of course, is going to vary at the stage of the, um, you know, setting of the plaster. And with less aggressive texture, say, once it's getting very close to setting fully, then you've got a pretty nice foundation for doing, you know, soil work on top of that. That was one of my concerns is, well, well, if you coat everything in plaster, what can you do with it at that point? And this gives me uh, a sense that you can manipulate it and the brushes do make that um, much more viable, I guess is the word I would use. Um, so, but it's dependent on of course, the thickness of the plaster, its initial mix, the thinness of the plaster when you, um, uh, the uh, temperature and humidity of your room, how fast is it going to set up? Uh, also, um, what, uh, how large of a space is it? Are you going to be able to cover it all relatively quickly because the brushes really start to fail you when it starts to gel. And uh, at one point on the initial uh, pass, I actually then just started grabbing plaster and just pressing it on just, just again, just to try it out. This makes a nice little spatula for scooping up plaster. I will say that. Um, so it's a, it's an interesting kit. Um, you know what? I've already shot the ending <laughs> and I don't know if I'm going to reshoot it. I really had some trouble yesterday. So I'm going to give one uh, more final thought, if, and forgive me if I repeat myself. I think it's a nice kit all paired together. And I didn't really think of it quite like that until I just described, well, they don't plaster, I could spoon it all out. 
that was kind of nice. I didn't really think about how nice it was to have the spatula right at that moment when I wanted to add a little thickness. So they kind of complement each other. Um, however, these uh, collapsing bowls uh, did, <laughs> when I wasn't paying attention, they did spray uh, a bit of plaster a couple times when I, I wasn't uh, familiar with their operation. So, you know, there's a small caveat there, but uh, I think as a, as a grouping, the only concern outright that I would say you should think about is whether you really need a, a pail, you know, this big. Oh gosh, I just thought of another reason why it would be good. All right. <laughs> so what I did is I mixed the plaster and water in here and I made a very small batch. Um, you know, so I, I shrunk the batch by half. So I was using uh, five ounces of plaster, two ounces of water, poured that in, mixed it up. I would not say mixing up that amount of plaster in here with this tool was easy. It, it worked, it worked, but I, I was splopping it and then it would blurble out, right? And I, I wanna try to be neat when I do this. So this is really gonna be better for mixing larger amounts of plaster a little more easily. These ridges, you know, you gotta kind of work in there to get all of the plaster dry mix in, incorporated. However, it also occurred to me that this is a nice little water container that you can automatically know how much you've got. I'm going to do five batches of plaster, five ounces each. Well, I can fill this up uh, for water, I mean, to 25 ounces. And I know I got five ounce, five batches worth of water to do my mixing in. So, it, you know, I don't know. It's, it's, uh, it's kind of nice. I, when I take water over to the bench when... In the old days when I did a lot more plaster casting, um, I had to go back and forth to the sink a lot because I'd run out of water. And uh, the I thought of having this right next to me uh, full of water, I mean, that's a big pail, put it in the fridge, let it chill off, take it out. Now your plaster is gonna be slower to harden. You'll have more time to brush it on. Hopefully that information was more helpful than me just constantly pointing at the same tools over and over and over. I'll try and revisit some of this when I go back to doing um, the plaster and the shaper sheet review. Uh, but it was just some thoughts that I literally just spontaneously had and I didn't want to let them go. So having taken a look at the uh, mixing tools, uh, the brush set is available on hobbylink.com for $12. Hobbylink.com is a site where I get many of my materials. They have some of the best prices on the net, so it's a good judge of what a fair price would be. Fair. And the mixing cup set is uh, currently listed for $14. My overall impressions of them, uh, which I discussed somewhat at the bench, uh, but in summary, I would say that the set as a whole offers quite a bit of flexibility in terms of working with plaster. The uh, cups, easy to store, uh, large enough size that they give you some flexibility. Uh, not great for mixing very small amounts of plaster, so, you know, uh, judge that for yourself. Uh, the brushes, 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 the brushes offer a new way of working with plaster on surfaces, uh, and I think it could have um, really nice applications for larger pieces, maybe for smaller, but mo mainly, you know, larger areas, uh, especially where you'd like to preserve detail so that you can apply very thin layers of the plaster. So uh, overall, I am glad to have them in the shop and I probably wish I had them back when I was doing my first Evil Castle because I think doing the backdrop on that piece uh, would have been uh, would have been a welcome place to use these uh, brushes and plaster rather than the sculpt mold that I ended up using. So. Hopefully you found some of this information helpful. Um, if you have questions or comments, always feel free to leave them down below. I look at every comment. I will get to the questions as fast as I can based on my quirky time frame. And uh, don't forget uh, that you could uh, support me a little bit by making a small small monthly contribution on Patreon. Uh, you may wonder where do those funds go? What does he do with them? Uh, right now I am replacing my Dremel, which I fried after abusing it on the ocean boards, shaving off all that bad gloss coating, and then later in the shop working on some tools for the uh, wood shop that I made for cabinets. 
I worked that Dremel. I worked it until it was dead and I brought it back to life and then I killed it again and then I brought it back to life and then I killed it dead. So I have a new one on the way and it's the kind of addition to the studio that the support I get from my patrons really makes a difference for. So I just wanted to mention that. Hopefully you will be coming back for the next product review, project update, rapid fire critique, whatever it is that comes out after this one, uh, because you know that I will be back soon with another Terrence Gapes video.